Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Commissioner Anderson? Here. Commissioner Basham? Here. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Here. Commissioner Daub? Here. Commissioner Haddis? Present. Commissioner Colleen? Here. Commissioner Kenlock? Present. Commissioner Knizic? Here. Commissioner Marecki? Here. Commissioner Baker McCormick has requested an excuse. Commissioner Scott? Present. Commissioner Varga? Here. Vice Chair Pro Tem Beydoun? Here. Vice Chair Palomero? Here. Chair Bell? Here. You have a quorum present. Fantastic. Next item, please. Invocation. Hey, today we're going to have the invocation introduction by Commissioner Kenlock. At this time, I'll turn it over to him. Yes, good morning. Good morning. One moment. Yes, good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. It is with great pleasure that I introduce. You got an echo. One moment. It is with great pleasure that I introduce uh, Pastor Bertram Lewis, Sr., pastor of St. Philip's Evangelical Lutheran Church. Pastor Lewis was born in Salem, Alabama, and at an early age, his family moved to Indianapolis, Indiana, where he was raised. He attended public school number 41 and graduated from Short Ridge High School with an academic diploma, college prep. He attended Indiana University and graduated with a bachelor's in general studies, majoring in supervision and psychology. He also holds a bachelor's degree in theology from Trinity Bible College. Evansville, Indiana, and a Master's of Divinity from Masters International University and School of Divinity, and will complete the requirements for his doctorate in Biblical Theology in 2021. He has pastored at Shepherd of the City Lutheran Church, Fort Wayne, Indiana, St. Philip's Evangelical Lutheran Church, Cleveland, Ohio, and he is currently the pastor of St. Philip Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Detroit. He has served on both districts and synodical boards for the, uh, for the Lutheran congregation. He has taught religion at Lutheran High School, East Cleveland Heights, Ohio. It is with great honor that I bring before you for the invocation at this meeting, Reverend Bertram, B. Lewis Sr., Pastor, St. Philip Evangelical Lutheran Church. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let us bow our heads in prayer. O Holy One who knows what we desire before we ask and give it before we even think about it. We incline our hearts to you in love and gratitude. There are no words to express your goodness no pictures to describe your infinite care. But teach us how to relax in your presence and how to breathe deeply and know that you are here among us. Let the sense of your coming smooth our wrinkled brows and release the tightness of our muscles and recondition our thinking about ourselves and the world around us. Shape us to your gen generosity that we may love one another with Christ-like love and that we may plan together how best to serve little children in darkness and in unhappy lands and lonely unwed mothers in our own cities and frightened elderly citizens who can no longer cope with a changing world. Grant that the vision of your kingdom may overcome every selfish vision and fear that we have so that we shall be willing to follow our master even to a cross for the sake of the life to come for all people. Shake us, Father, torment us, and comfort us until we are, we are yours, until we stop playing and say, here am I, Lord, I am yours to command. 
And then we shall bless your name with all the saints and angels in heaven and sing your praises forever in the name that is above every name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor, for that beautiful prayer. We appreciate you joining us for this meeting. Thank you so much. You're welcome. God bless you. Next item, Madam Chair. <laughs> Madam Chair, I'm going to give you all kind of titles, Claire. <laughs> 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 Before we Sometimes it's good for you to be chair. <laughs> now, before we continue, I need to go back and state that if any commissioner is not in Wayne County, can you please indicate so now? Okay, moving right along. Reading, correcting, and approval of the journal. Thank you. Vice Chair Pro Tim Doom. Move for approval. Support. It's been moved and supported. Are there any changes to the journal? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Anyone wish to abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item. Report from the chair. Thank you so much. Um, over the last few weeks, um, many of us have received emails from our dedicated union employees um, in reference to the hazard pay. And I want them all to know that uh, the formula and the criteria is being worked on very diligently by the administration. They're looking at the criteria for the American uh, Rescue Plan and what all of those guidelines are. So I just want you to know that within the next 30 days or so, there should be um, a resolve to that and the administration will let you know what that plan is going to be. So please uh, be patient, but there is some relief coming for those persons who had to work during the pandemic. And there were um, people who had to, and then people who could work from home. For those people who had to work and come to a uh, office or a building for county work, there will be something for you. And that plan will be uh, thoroughly uh, discussed, vetted, and then we'll have it to you within the next 30 days. Thank Madam you. Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Yes. I just wanna thank you for uh, working with the administration to come up with this solution. I have received a number of e emails yes. requesting the hazard pay. And, you know, I, and I agree with them. Uh, they, if, you know, they come into a building or work out at a site where uh, it's, it is hazardous to their health, yet they still show up. I, I would think that if we've got some COVID funds, then they ought to be compensated. So I just want to thank both uh, you and the administration for coming up with a suitable uh, solution. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And again, I can't uh, say enough how thankful we are for our dedicated employees for coming in every day, making sure that the county was functioning and doing your job. Uh, we really appreciate it. And there will be some compensation for those persons. Thank you. Thank you. Next item. We are on page two of the agenda, unfinished business. There is none listed. We are moving to offering of all petitions, ordinances, resolutions, and presentations. There is one resolution listed on the agenda and two on the addenda. Resolution number one, number one is by Commissioner Daub declaring May 12, 2021 as Older Michiganians Day in Wayne County in honor of the county's population of older adults. Commissioner Daub. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our friends over at the Senior Alliance asked if I would present this resolution to the Wayne County Commission in celebration of Senior Action Week and Old, Older Michiganians Day 2021. And yes, it is Older Michiganians Day, not Michiganders. I double checked that. Um, Senior Action Week is next week, May 10th through the 12th. A special live stream event will be held on Wednesday, May 12th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 with Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky, Speaker of the House Jason Wentworth, U.S. Senator Gary Peters, and others. The Senior Alliance will hold a discussion on legislative issues impacting older adults on Zoom on Monday, May 10th from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Information for these events can be found on the Area Agencies on Aging website under events. And I can put that um, 
link in the chat for everyone. So I encourage everyone to participate in those events next week. And now I would like to move this resolution for approval. Support. It's been moved and supported. Uh, discussion, Commissioner Basham. Yeah, I resemble that remark. <laughs> I'll leave it alone. That's why I supported it. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm one of those older Michiganians. Commissioner Clark Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said that that's why I supported oh, it. That <laughs> because, because I'm one of those older Michiganians. All right, very good. Any discussion on this resolution? Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote for the resolution, please. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Basham? If I have to, yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Daub? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Commissioner Kenlock? Yes. Commissioner Knizic? Yes. Commissioner Marecki? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Varga? Commissioner Varga? She's muted. Yes. Sorry. Vice Chair Pro Tim Beydoun? Yes. Vice Chair Palomero? Yes. Chair Bell? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Thank you so much. Let's go to. Madam Chair? Oh, yes. Commissioner Varga. Could we open the board for all co sponsors? Sure. Um, if you'd like to co sponsor, if you know how to raise your hand in the chat or raise it so that the clerk can see. We have everybody. Commissioner Scott, are you co-sponsoring? I am. I, I'm, I'm in the chat. <laughs> well, maybe I didn't go in the right one. <laughs> yes. Reaction. Go to reactions. Okay. I'm scrolling through. I think that's all of the commissioners. Okay. It's there now. Co-sponsors duly noted. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank you. All right. If everyone could lower their hand. Okay. Go to reactions and it says lower hand. Okay. Very good. I right, go to the agenda, please, for the other two resolutions. We are on the addenda. Item number two is a resolution by Commissioner Basham and co-sponsored by Commissioners Clark Coleman, Colleen Marecki, Palomera, and Varga, proudly supporting the law enforcement officials of the United States of America. Okay, Commissioner Basham. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, because of what's going on nationally, and we have tens of thousands of police officers in this country and thousands of police departments, um, I... Uh, I've been hearing stuff from my uh, police department's uh, officers downriver. I have uh, seven police agencies in my district. I have the Metro South is in Taylor. We got Wayne County. And then I got Taylor, Brownstown, Woodhaven, Flat Rock, and Rockwood. Uh, I went and bought them lunch uh, to tell them that I support them personally. And as an elected official, I support the police department. And what I heard from from the chiefs and some others, what was, uh, was sad and disheartening. I had one chief that told me, he said, uh, I feel like I'm on an island and, and uh, I've had enough and I, I'm gonna retire. I just can't take it anymore. And, and I said, well, if you're on an island, I'm on the island with you. I just want you to know that we support our police departments downriver. And so I was gonna let it go at that and just buy them lunch and let it go. And then we had a congressperson that came out and said uh, that uh, we don't need policing. It's, it's uh, all police. It's racist. We don't need it. She, um, she ended her uh, twi Twitter thing. It wound up getting a lot of uh, comments uh, on the, from the press. And even one of the people that I really admire, uh, Chief Craig from Detroit, said that uh, this congresswoman's 
comments were reckless and, and they're disgusting. And, he's, and uh, also it's not reflecting of every law agency and it's not rec reflecting every man and woman that serves in this capacity. And he is so true. And we have good and bad police officers, but the majority are good. Uh, we have good and bad teachers, priests, and I can and elected officials. I can go on and on, but quite frankly, all I wanted to do is just put it out there publicly that absolutely uh, this guy, this elected official, and they can throw me out of office if they want, but I support our police departments and the police standards is not they, the police chiefs run their departments, but the standards are done by, it used to be called Malazzi, but it's now it's uh, state standards, it's called MCOLs. And they're the ones that, that train the police departments and so on and so forth. And to boil it down to Wayne County, that we're commissioners of, we have 200 and some openings in Wayne County. We can't find police officers. And we need to tell, and, and also tell them that we want them, that we support them. And, and we don't want just white male officers. We want female, we want African-American, we want Asian, we want, we want a reflection of our communities in police departments, qualified, well-trained and doing a good job to protect us. So anyway, that's what was the inspiration for me doing my resolution, but thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Commissioner Anderson? I'm sorry, wait, yeah. uh, wait a minute, Commissioner. Did you make a um, motion? I'm making a motion, thank you. Is there support? Support. support. Marecki. Okay, is there discussion? I saw Commissioner Anderson's hand first, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to uh, mention that I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor. Uh, I know there was a notice sent out, but I didn't see it in time yesterday before the, uh, apparently a deadline of two o'clock or three o'clock, uh, but, <clears throat> but I did want to uh, be a, added as a co-sponsor. Thank you, duly noted. Commissioner. Oh, also, Madam Chair. Chair. Yeah. Hold on one second, hold on one second. <laughs> Commissioner Hayes. Yeah, also i like to be added. Okay, thank you. The clerk will note, Commissioners Baydoum. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I would like to be added also uh, to this resolution as a co-sponsor. Okay, clerk will note, Commissioner Kinlock. You know, um, that it is unfortunate that we are, um, voting today on two important resolutions that speak to the resolve of, I believe, not only this county commission, but the resolve of all citizens as relates to most citizens, I should say, um, as relates to the civil rights and the concerns as it relates to uh, policing and those issues that have been brought forward in the media because of the deaths um, by police officers and the various other challenges that um, the black community and specifically black males have experienced um, at the hands of um, these few officers who have disrupted our communities. Um, it's unfortunate that the Congresswoman's comments, in my opinion, were used as a linchpin um, to motivate and to drive a conversation that should not take place uh, under one umbrella. You're not saying that you do not support police officers when you call for police reforms. We all agree that there needs to be more training. We also agree that uh, it's, you know, a lot of officers, a lot of citizens and individuals have chosen not to go into the police field because we're underfunding. We're not paying our police officers as we're not paying our teachers fair and equitable wages where they can sustain a family in any meaningful way. What I'm saying is, is that I, it's just unfortunate that we're voting on both these um, resolutions today. Um, I, I, I absolutely do believe that we need police reform, but for people to take it out of context and talk about how uh, that also means to, uh, to basically eliminate police departments, that's lunacy. When we talk about police reforms and the changes that we need in police departments, it does not include eliminating um, police officers in the fine work that many and most of these officers do protecting and serving us. I also would like to um, um, state that um, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib's comments are her comments. 
and um, and she uh, is quite capable and in 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 arguing and 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 and, and debating those um, those um, those comments. Um, but it's unfortunate that she was inserted into this conversation this morning um, because those were her comments, and um, most individuals do not support eliminating police department when they say that they want police uh, reform. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Kanizik. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry, because I know that the, the email yesterday was meant to streamline this process and I missed the deadline as well. So I would like to be added as a co-sponsor for this resolution. Okay, duly noted. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Colleen. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I agree with uh, much of what uh, Commissioner uh, Kinlock uh, just mentioned. Uh, Although I will quibble with this, I, I don't think it is unfortunate that we're voting on these both today. Uh, I think this is an expression, if both of them pass, of the Wayne County Commission saying, yes, we do support our police officers. And in addition, we have to change a little, we have to change the uh, relationship between policing and our communities um, and how we go about things out there and that we you know, we need other things out there, you know, mental health folks going out um, uh, on runs. Uh, so I don't see the two of them as incompatible at all. Uh, so I like the idea that today, hopefully, the commission will say both things with regards to our peace officers. We support you, but we also support uh, reforms that will make your job better and make the community safer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Anderson. You're on mute. Thank you're you, on Madam mute, Commissioner. Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, uh, I, I guess, um, as uh, Commissioner Klein just mentioned, I, I do have a difference uh, of what one of the things that was said that the uh, uh, our our congressional representative in the 13th district, I think should be more considerate of the, of the district and not say such things that set a firestorm uh, that such as eliminating our police departments. Uh, we, we need our police departments. And uh, so I, I do believe we have a responsibility uh, to monitor or monitor ourselves and what we say. Uh, but anyway, thank you, thank you very much. I, I disagree with that totally. Thank you, Commissioner Varga. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think it's just important that we all watch the words that we choose to use as opposed to uh, how people are going to interpret our words. Uh, defunding is uh, not one word that I would use, but we do need to uh, reimagine um, and we need to be creative Community policing is one that uh, we use in Detroit, especially in my fourth district, and it's working. So I think uh, Chief Craig has been awesome in, uh, in being creative and encouraging the communities to be involved with the police officers. And I know firsthand by the uh, fourth precinct that it's really working. We have four community policing. I work very closely with them. Uh, so uh, I thank you both for introducing the resolution. And I do think that we as elected officials do have the responsibility to speak up anytime we see anyone say anything or anyone do anything that we don't agree with and reinforce the idea that um, our values have not changed. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the resolution? Okay, hearing none, roll call vote, please. <clears throat> Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Daw. Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Commissioner Kenlock? Yes. Commissioner Knizic? Yes. Commissioner Marecki? Yes. Commissioner Scott? I will be abstaining, although I support my local agencies here. 
but I will abstain on this resolution. Duly noted. Commissioner Varga? Yes. Vice Chair Pro Tem Beydoun? Yes. Vice Chair Palomero? Yes. Chair Bell? Yes. Motion carries, and I have Commissioner Scott as abstaining, and additional co sponsors of Commissioners Anderson, Hattis, Beydoun, and Knesset. And I'm respectfully <laughs> abstaining. Duly noted, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next item, please. Item number three is a resolution by Commissioner Bell and co-sponsored by Commissioners Clark Coleman, Daub, Colleen, Kenlock, and Varga, encouraging all communities to reimagine policing in a manner that restores healthy relations between law enforcement and citizens by maximizing the use of technology and providing de-escalation and crisis intervention training, including the use of mental health professionals. Move Thank approval. It's been Support. moved. Been moved and supported. Thank you. And I'll just speak to this um, as well. Uh, one of um, the Congresswomen who I respect dearly is Val Demings from Florida. She is a former police chief in Orlando and yeah. she's a Congresswoman and she is very supportive of this uh, act called the Joy Floyd uh, Reform, I'm sorry, Justice of Policing Act. Um, and as a uh, former police chief, she has seen it all, obviously. And before that, she was a social worker. So I say that to say that law enforcement individuals are very in favor of the Joy Floyd Justice and Policing Act because it does things to reimagine what policing is. It was spoke about earlier, the crisis intervention training, the community policing, uh, recruiting, using body cams, um, using tactics to safely de-escalate situations and really utilizing our mental health professionals on calls that are not of a violent nature, but of a mental health nature. So that's what is in this act and that's why I support it and I'm bringing it forward for this body to support. My first cousin who was the same age as I who passed away from cancer, but prior to that, he was a decorated police officer of Detroit public, I'm sorry, the Detroit Police Department. So I have police officers in my family. I love my neighborhood police officers in the second, sixth precinct. Um, we love our police officers and the job that they do, but they would tell you that there are some reforms to make their job easier and to make our community safer. And they are on board with this as well. So that's why I brought this resolution today. And I think that the second and third resolutions are not mutually exclusive. They complement each other. Yes, we support our police officers. And yes, we understand that we need to reimagine what policing looks like in the United States. So that's why I brought this resolution forward and I ask for your support. Discussion. Support. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner uh, Irma Clark Coleman, see your hand. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I think that you put it succinctly. Um, <clears throat> These both resolutions <clears throat> are, are, are complement each other. Um, and I have to give a shout out to the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th precincts for uh, their community and their neighborhood policing. And they are truly an example of how to work with the community. So that the police uh, is the police officers are not seen. <clears throat> excuse me, are not seen as an enemy. <clears throat> uh, they are seen as our friends because they uh, work with the community. We work out in the neighborhoods, and I know that the tenth, the eleventh, and the twelfth they do an outstanding job in that manner. And I'm so proud of the work that they they are doing under Chief Craig. And I do support uh, Chief Craig. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hayes. Thank you. I uh, also like to be added as a co-sponsor to the resolution uh, because we, uh, when I received the notice yesterday, it was already past three o'clock. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Do we note it? Commissioner Knizik? Same thing, Madam Chair. I'd like to be a, a co-sponsor of this resolution. Thank you, Commissioner. Noted. Commissioner Beydoun. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. I also would like to be added as a co-sponsor uh, to this resolution, and I would like to make a couple of remarks. Uh, I believe that uh, both of these resolutions are much needed at this critical time in, 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 our, uh, in our country. Um, we all have brothers, sisters, uh, cousins, friends, uh, fathers and mothers that worked in police agencies and reimagining policing and, and providing them with uh, additional tools uh, to protect themselves uh, uh, is very healthy. And we care because we care about our police departments. I, I believe uh, this is a very strong, uh, this is a good uh, resolution. And, and these measures are much needed in order to protect the lives of everyone the public and the police officers. Uh, so I, I much, uh, very much support uh, this resolution and the other one. And I applaud both of you uh, and the Commissioner Basham uh, for bringing these resolutions uh, forth to the commission to be voted on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Scott. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Let me thank you for this resolution. And I listened to Al, uh, uh, um, the Congresswoman Demings and, and I just think that she is just an upstanding uh, lady and have had all of the experiences that you spoke of. And so I thank you for this resolution and I'd love to be a co-sponsor of this. And I work with my all of my Hamtramck Highland Park and also the ninth precinct should be added into that also. So, so I am just grateful and look forward to working with all of my police officers uh, to, so that we can uh, have a better community. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner okay. Kellogg. Yes, Madam Chair. I would, uh, I wholeheartedly support this resolution and the, uh, and the uh, George Floyd um, um, Act as well. Um, here in Detroit, community policing has been uh, a key point of building with, ever since the 1973 charter. Um, our local police officers uh, do their best to forge relationships with the community groups uh, around the city of Detroit, uh, the community uh, police officers who are assigned uh, to the various neighborhoods around the city of Detroit, uh, get to know the residents uh, in, their, uh, in their areas. Uh, Chief Craig, and the Detroit Police Department, we absolutely have to um, take our hat off to them as they have um, done their best to show restraint um, when in difficult times, when you had um, those protests last year, uh, there were some um, sparks um, and some, um, uh, up some little uh, issues in, 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 in some, some, in few of the uh, the, the protests that occurred in the city of Detroit, but I absolutely um, commend uh, Chief Craig uh, and the uh, Duggan administration and more so the community, the community for um, working hard at um, building um, that bond between um, the police and our local community. So this, uh, this is absolutely um, a, a great action that we're taking to let the, uh, the world know that the Wayne County Commission uh, is strongly in support of, of this um, George Floyd Act. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Colleen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, some of the changes are already underway, and I just wanted to mention uh, two of them, that we already have some momentum, and it's a good thing. Uh, both Commissioner uh, Clark Coleman and, and, and uh, Commissioner Kinlock uh, correctly point out how Detroiters love their NPOs, their neighborhood police officers. And, and what a change in tone as I go around the east side with community groups um, in terms of policing, having those uh, neighborhood officers. The other thing I'll mention quickly is over at DeWin, the uh, mental health authority for the county, uh, seven, eight months ago, uh, we now have a contract with Detroit Police Department to provide uh, mental health uh, professionals to go out on certain kinds of runs uh, with the police. And uh, the, the authority has also been training uh, cops around the county uh, in different uh, uh, techniques and uh, with uh, mental health in mind. So some of these reforms are underway and uh, 
it's a great direction. And uh, I think this act, uh, the George Floyd Act will, will help that even more. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Varga. Thank you. I didn't mean to leave out Lincoln Park and Melvindale just singling out uh, <laughs> Southwest Detroit. <laughs> I work very, very closely with all of my uh, police officers, firefighters, um, but uh, I just wanted to let people know who may not know when we do have the precinct community relations meetings, the MPOs actually give out their phone numbers, their cell phone sure, numbers sure do. for people to call. Mm -hmm. And that is so um, encouraging because uh, if someone, for example, from my, my district or anywhere else would call who's bilingual, uh, they could have mm -hmm. someone call back in their language so that way they could be helped if they leave a message so i think i i, I just can't say enough about our community policing in uh in any of our uh wayne county community but especially in detroit thank you thank you commissioner anderson thank you madam chair um <clears throat> I just wanted to say that while I, uh, I absolutely deplore the actions of officers that uh, commit these atrocities uh, you know, on our citizens uh, in, in other parts of the country, there's not any mention in this resolution of the fine officers that do serve and within the limits of the law and the training that, and the policies of their departments. Um, I, I support many of the things that are in the act that I've been able to determine were in the act, uh, but I have to admit that I haven't been able to see uh, the full uh, down into the minutia of the legislation that's in uh, Washington. And uh, I'm afraid uh, this may be sending the wrong message to our law enforcement community. Uh, and we are already having a very difficult time filling vacancies in our sheriff's department right here in Wayne County and departments across the state are having problems filling vacancies. Um, it's, uh, I, I support just to, for the record, I support more thorough training and additional mental health and social workers involvement. I cannot see some of the circumstances of how a social worker, whether they're riding along with a police officer, unless they're a trained police officer as well, uh, how that would uh, play out. But I do believe there needs to be some social worker involvement in uh, referring uh, maybe some of the uh, those that are arrested. Uh, the, and I also support fully support uh, training that would de-escalate situations that people, uh, that the police officers are trained how to de-escalate a situation so no deadly force is required. I also support that uh, police officers should be provided with uh, stun guns or, or tasers uh, and some departments don't even have those. So I think it, a lot of it comes down to training as well as the equipment and uh, what they're provided uh, as well as recognizing problems that are exist within a community that they may not be can, uh, really trained to deal with. They really don't, uh, I, I think the community policing, we did that in Westland years ago, uh, years ago, and, and it continues. Uh, and that, that participation in the community and working with people that live in the community, I think is absolutely critical. And I support that. I also support uh, the uh, uh, greater screening of applicants. Uh, we need to make sure that those that are coming into the police departments as new hires are those that are not uh, just anxious to be able to carry a gun legally and wear the badge. They need to, and I, and I believe most departments do a good job, but I know there's always going to be some exceptions to that. Uh, but I think we need to do everything we can to eliminate those, those uh, types of uh, candidates. Um, I also, uh, across the country, as I mentioned, as well as here in Wayne County, recruiting officers are, uh, is be, has become a very serious problem. Uh, and I think a lot of it too, the, we have to be cautious about how we, uh, if we don't show the respect for police officers, 
uh, that are trying to do a good job in the community, then I believe then we, uh, just like our teaching uh, profession, uh, the state I think over the years has, uh, has actually uh, hurt the recruiting of teachers. They've hurt the, uh, uh, even the numbers of teachers or uh, ap applicants for the universities to get a teaching degree that has declined. And we have to be careful not to add to the problem of not being able to fill the law enforcement positions that are open in our own county as well as around the country. Um, so, and just to mention, I, I pushed a proposal back in the 90s uh, when I was on the city council in Westland that put video cameras, eventually put video cameras in patrol cars. And, and I believe that is a good provision. I believe uh, body cams are a good, provi a, a good a part of uh, the legislation that's there. But, uh, and just uh, to mention to the chair's uh, comments about uh, Val Demings, Congresswoman Val Demings, uh, truly respect her. I, uh, she was my first choice for VP. Of course, they didn't check with me to find out, but, <laughs> but I, I made it known that she was my first choice uh, before I really, I mean, and I think we've got a great vice president as, uh, by the way, but I do believe uh, she's, she's a great representative. But I believe the vast majority of, of our police officers are doing a fine job and we have to make sure that they're, they know we appreciate them. So I, I will be abstaining on this uh, because I think it, it does, it's a bit one-sided. I understand what it's trying to do, but I, it's also that I haven't uh, seen the full text and then got into the minutia of this legislation and didn't really have time. I just found out about this resolution yesterday. And, uh, and so I would like to have seen us do these uh, resolutions on different, um, different times to be able to have more time to dig into it uh, because I didn't realize this was coming until just yesterday. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's my piece. Thank you. So okay, thank you, Commissioner Scott. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I couldn't remember whether or not I said I wanted to be a co-sponsor, and I do, because I think this leans towards us really moving forward. And hopefully that that the jo Lord Joy Floyd bill will be passed, because we need a national bill so that all the policemen uh, have the same thing, uh, because we're all God's children, and we all ought to be treated alike. And I certainly would love to be a co-sponsor of this bill. Thank you. Thank you, duly noted. And Commissioner Hedus. Thank you, Madam the Chair. I was sitting listening uh, to my colleague on the need, uh, what the police department need to be trained and equipped and uh, uh, to be able to do the job the way we want them to do it, to protect us. Uh, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I'm listening to all those and my experience in life. I felt there one important element, if we talk about the solution a lot and not try to take responsibility for the solution and fund the solution. I have nine law enforcement agency in my district, seven municipality, Wayne County Sheriff and the State Police. Some of the municipality I know for fact, they stretch to the max. Fact, they shorthand it because of the funding and because of the lack of applicant, both. I think we need to have a resolution to Washington DC to increase the funding for all police agencies to be able to hire with decent wage and benefit and training. To address that issue, we have to realize it's gonna cost some money in some municipality a budget. It's fact, some of them in the red. So we to address that issue, I hope all of us, the commissioner will have resolution to Washington ask them to increase the funding for those purposes. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. You're right about that. And um, 
before we vote, I'll just say that uh, I'm a vice chair on the Justice and Public Safety Committee for NACO, and one of the resolutions I put forward was funding for the DOJ for body cams. Um, yours takes it a step further, which I agree with, is uh, funding for the law departments, uh, law, uh, law enforcement departments across the country. So I agree with you that funding is absolutely an issue for all agencies across the country. And um, let me also give a shout out to the uh, 8th and 10th precincts uh, who I work closely with as well in my district. Um, any final comments before we take a vote? Okay, very good. Um, and again, um, these uh, both these resolutions, I think, speak to the heart of how we feel as commissioners that yes, law enforcement agencies are important. And yes, I think they realize as we do that there are some improvements just with every other profession that needs to be done to make them the best agencies that they can be. So at this time, we will take a roll call vote on the third resolution. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Basham. Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman. Yes. Commissioner Dobb. Yes. Commissioner Haddis. Yes. Commissioner Colleen. Aye. Commissioner Kenlock. Yes. Commissioner Knizic. Yes. Commissioner Morecki. Abstain. Commissioner Scott. Yes. Commissioner Barga. Yes. Vice Chair Potem Beydoun. Yes. Vice Chair Palomera. Yes. Chair Bell. Yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> and I have Commissioners Anderson and Marecki as abstentions and co-sponsors. Additional are Commissioners Haddis, Knizic, Beydoun, and Scott. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Commissioners. Appreciate the discussion and um, hopefully Congress will hear, hear us. <laughs> so uh, next item, we'll go back to the um, agenda, Madam Clerk. Back to page two of the agenda, reports from committees. Report A is from the Committee on Economic Development. There are two items listed. Commissioner Haters. Thank you, Madam the Chair. Item one for receive, I move item one to receive and file and item two for approval. Support. They okay, moved and supported. Any discussion on the Economic Development Committee report? Okay, hearing none, we have an approval item. So we'll do a roll call vote on this report. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Basham. Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman. Yes. Commissioner Dodd. Yes. Commissioner Haddis. Yes. Commissioner Colleen. Aye. Commissioner Kenlock. Yes. Commissioner Knizic. Yes. Commissioner Morecki. Yes. Commissioner Scott. Yes. Commissioner Varga. Yes. Vice Chair Pro Tem Beydoun. Yes. Vice Chair Palomero. Yeah. Chair Bell. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item, please. We are on report B from the Committee on Public Services. There are nine items listed on pages two through five of the agenda. Commissioner Marecki. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move um, items one through nine for approval. Support. 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 It's moved and supported in discussion on the nine items on the, under the Public Services Report. Uh, yeah, Madam. Commissioner Colleen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, item nine, uh, just out of uh, curiosity, 50, was it 51? 41 Freightliner truck chassis. Uh, it just stuck, stuck out to me. Well, what are we doing with 41 Freightliner truck chassis for public services? Good morning. Good morning. This is Derek Coley, Director of Equipment Division, DPS. Um, these 41 chassis are part of our, our major replacement of our dump trucks. As everyone knows, our dump truck fleet um, are our primary snow and ice control vehicles. Um, 
we uh, we we have a five year plan to um, upgrade our fleet and replace uh, that aging equipment. Um, uh, the initial purchase uh, uh, in this plan is 16. Um, we do have 16 new dump trucks being built now. Um, and out of uh, fiscal year, uh, out of fiscal year $20, which is what this is coming from, um, we are um, replacing 40 dump trucks and one metal truck that our bridge repair, our, our bridges and structures uh, department and roads um, will use as uh, uh, one of their service vehicles for delivering heavy metal. Uh, thank, thank you very much for that, sir. Uh, yeah, the five-year replacement is good. Is this literally just buying the chassis and we're moving engines and stuff from the older equipment? Or is this buying the chassis and then later we're going to buy the other equipment to build uh, the new vehicles? How does uh, that the, go? Through the chair, that is correct. Um, these are just the chassis. Um, they will be completed chassis. And then the upfit, uh, this body will see a uh, purchase request coming very soon. And that'll be all new equipment. That won't be recycling some equipment off of the old trucks. That is correct. All new equipment. Thank you. Thank metal, you. Metal for Chair. metal replacements. Yep. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Scott. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to be the maker of the motion on eight, please. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just wanted to ask uh, a quick question about those. Are, do we, are we buying uh, or do we have aluminum uh, body or beds for those trucks to carry the salt and everything? Or will they be used over on the new trucks, transferred over to the new trucks? Uh, through the chair, that is correct. Um, the Freightliner chassis, um, they are uh, uh, very new and, and new technology. They have a lot of new features. One of them is they are e aluminum so that our previous fleet uh, in the past were, you know, our trucks basically live in a salt bath at least six months out of the year. So rust has been a problem. These Freightliner chassis are aluminum. And then um, the upfit, which is the dump body that will be built on top of those chassis, those will be stainless steel. So we will not have the deterioration associated with rust that we've had on previous um, uh, dump trucks. And, and, and just to clarify that those uh, chassis will include the engine, correct? Yes. It'll, it'll have, and not the cab or, but uh, are you saying not the cab? It'll just be the chassis with the engine and transmission and everything? It is the cab. The cab is, is what is made of aluminum. Um, it includes the cab. The completed chassis includes the cab, the engine transmission and the frame rail. And um, on top of the frame rail, the upfit or the dump body that we'll see, you know, that you see as a completed dump truck um, that is, uh, is built on top of the frame rail. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Any additional discussion on these items? Okay, hearing none, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Daub? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Commissioner Kenlock? Yes. Commissioner Knizic? Yes. Commissioner Marecki? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Barga? Yes. Vice Chair Pro Tem Doom? Yes. Vice Chair Palomero? Yes. Chair Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item, please. We are on Report C from the Committee on Audit. There are two items listed. Commissioner Basham? Uh, I'd like to move uh, to receive and file uh, two items. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion on these two items? Hearing none, we'll do a, a voice vote because they are receiving files. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Anyone wish to abstain? Motion carries. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Next item. <clears throat> on page six of the agenda, report D from the Committee on Public Safety, Judiciary, and Homeland Security. There are seven items listed. Commissioner, <clears throat> Commissioner Clark Coleman? 
Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move that we receive and file uh, all seven items. Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Any discussion on these items? Again, because they're receiving files, we'll do a voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Anyone wish to abstain? Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Next item, please. We're on report E from the Committee on Government Operations. There are two items listed on pages six and seven of the agenda. Commissioner Dobb. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move items one and two for approval. There's support. Support. Okay, moved and supported. Any discussion on the two items from government operations? Commissioner Basham. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll be a no on one comparable source. Okay, duly noted. Any other discussion on the government operations report? Okay, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes, but a no on one. Thank you. Duly noted. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Daub? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Commissioner Kenlock? Yes. Commissioner Knizik? Yes. Commissioner Morecki? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Varga? Yes. Vice Chair Pro Tem Beidoun? Yes. Vice Chair Palomera? Yes. Chair Bell? Yes. Motion carries, and I have Commissioner Basham as a note on item number one. Okay, thank you. Next item, please. Upcoming committee and task force meetings. Okay, everyone, please note the upcoming meetings. And um, I don't see it on here, but the Women's Commission will have their first meeting on May 13th at 12 noon. The notices have gone out to all of the members of the committee, and we look forward to uh, them having their first meeting. If there are any meetings um, or changes that you need to make, please alert the clerk. Otherwise, these are the meetings scheduled for next week. Next item. Public comments. Okay, is there anyone on the phone who would like to give public comments? Anyone on the telephone or on Zoom? You can unmute everyone and see if anyone would like to give public comments. If so, just um, begin speaking. You have two minutes. Anyone? for public comments on the telephone or on Zoom. One more time, public comments, anyone? Madam Clerk, do you have any emails that you've received? We did receive one email. Okay, if you could read that, please. Greetings, Wayne County Commissioners. On April 14th, 2021, I attended the Committee of the Whole via Zoom, where there was discussion with Chief Financial Officer Huey Newsom regarding the American Rescue Plan Act funds. He outlined what could be done with the funds. He mentioned that the county had met with various community partners regarding the funds. However, no one from the county has met with the union regarding the funds. Mr. Newsom stated that the monies could be used to provide additional pay to eligible employees up to $13 per hour above current hourly rate. The business of the county continues during this pandemic. We are public service employees and we came to work. We are still working. And it should be noted that not one AFSCME Local 1659 member received hazard pay in 2020, not one. For all the work we do, we are all essential and should be eligible for additional pay from the American Rescue Plan funds from Lorna Davidson. Thank you so much. And any other emails? No additional emails. All right, thank you so much. Next item, please. We are moving to page eight of the agenda, new business. There's one item listed on the agenda and two on the addenda. Item number one, 
is requesting commission approval of retroactive modification number two to a contract with a one-year option to renew between the Charter County of Wayne and U.S. Corrections. Okay, and um, this is for services at the prosecutor's office. Um, who's here to discuss this? Madam Chair, Tony Guerrero here, Chief of okay. Legislation, Grants, and Community Relations for the Prosecutor's Office. First of all, we'd like to thank you, Madam Chair, and the entire commission for allowing this matter to be put on for immediate consideration. Um, we apologize for the retroactivity. However, this was part of a firestorm that occurred when the prosecutor's office lost our chief financial officer who retired just as the pandemic was beginning. And then with the confusion from the pandemic, unfortunately, the company continued to provide services to us beyond the end of the contract for an additional two months. We owe them currently $25,826. We have asked merely to extend the contract to the end of July. There is no additional funding being requested. The funds were already in our budget. We wanna make certain that we can pay US corrections. And the, the sad news is because U.S. Corrections was not being paid, they suspended services. We have already spent $40,646 on our investigators having to go out to pick up these prisoners in other jurisdictions. The good, the good news is we, um, with the assistance of the procurement department, actually let out an RFP, a request for proposals, this Monday for these services and we put that out nationally. Uh, our, our goal there is to request a three-year contract with a one, two-year option to renew. Hopefully we will put an end to this and not have to burden the commission, but we most sincerely appreciate the attention and the fact that you have allowed immediate consideration. I'll be happy to answer any other questions there may be. Thank you, Tony. Commissioner Irma Clark Coleman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. As uh, Chair of Public Safety, uh, I, Judiciary and Homeland Security, I certainly approve of this. I have uh, followed this as uh, at, at all of the trials that they've had in trying to uh, get this item through and, through, and to pay um, the contractor uh, they've had quite a, a difficult time, but I, but I thoroughly support this, and I thank you for allowing it to go on the agenda. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Basham. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, you know I'm going to say something about retroactives, but uh, Murphy's Law does apply to this, and so I, I will reluctantly uh, support this because uh, when you dig down into it, I understand why it's retroactive. So. Uh, that being the circumstances, I will support it. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on this item? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Reluctantly, yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Dog? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Commissioner Kenlock? Yes. Commissioner Knizic? Yes. Commissioner Marecki? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Varga? Yes. Vice Chair Pro Tem Dune? Yes. Vice Chair Palomero? Yes. Chair Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item, please. We're moving to the addenda. Item number two is requesting commission approval of the appointment of Nicole A. Carter to the Detroit Wayne Joint Building Authority Board of Commissioners. Move okay. approval. Been moved. Commissioner Kenlock. Is, is there support? Support Haddis. Okay, it's been moved and supported. This is a joint approval. City Council approved it uh, a couple of weeks ago and now it's before us to approve as well. This is a three-member board, and um, this is a, the joint, 
the person is a joint approval process. Um, Council Johnson, do you want to add anything to this? Good morning through the chair. Um, Chairwoman, as you are aware, there has been um, great discussion back and forth between commission staff and the authority and the city to try to coordinate this particular <coughs> appointment. Um, the city has approved, the state law provides that this is a four-year appointment. Um, the city, is my understanding, their approval is not quite four years. I'm still having conversations with them to make sure that we coordinate this appointment, it's my understanding that the city council will reconsider this. Don't know what the new dates for that term will be, but I am going to ask this body and chairwoman, I don't know if you saw my text. I'm advised that the earliest city council will reconsider this is not actually May 11th as I advised yesterday, but May 18th. So I would ask that this um, appointment begin May 18th through May 17th, 2025, which would be four years in accordance with state law. That'll also give uh, the city council the opportunity to coordinate their four-year term with ours. Okay, very good. Um, I believe there was a Detroit city council person who was going to join the call. I don't uh, know if they made it or not. Uh, Councilman Alex McAllister. Um, if you could maybe be, unmute everyone, Octavia, in case um, one of the council members are on the call. Okay. Is everyone unmuted? Yes, Chair. Sure. Everyone has been asked to unmute themselves. Okay. All right. Is one of the Detroit City Council members on the on the call? Okay, they had uh, asked earlier in the morning. Okay, any discussion on such a motion first? I think we have a motion. It's moved by Commissioner Kenlock and supported. Any discussion on this item? Any discussion on this item? Okay, roll call vote for this item, please. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Dobb? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Commissioner Kenlock? Yes. Commissioner Knizic? Yes. Commissioner Marecki? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Varga? Yes. Vice Chair Pro Tem Beydoun? Yes. Vice Chair Palomero? Yes. Chair Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Chairwoman? Yes. I am told that we did not get a motion on item number one. On item number one for the- um, Less corrections, that there was not a motion or support. Oh, we just started voting? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Support. Support. All right, we have a motion and a support. Um, will our vote? Do we have to vote again, or can the vote stand as we stay, as we already took it? Um, revote, please. All right. I'm sorry. I thought we had a motion and support for that item. Which which item? Was, which item? This, this was the one for the um, prosecutor's office. Oh, okay. Oh, we didn't so, have a motion for that. I thought I yeah, had. Oh. I thought so too, but apparently not. So now we have a new motion and support. Wow. So if we could go ahead, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Dobb? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Commissioner Kenlock? Yes. Commissioner Knizic? Yes. Commissioner Marecki? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Varga? Yes. Vice Chair Pro Tem Beydoun? Yes. Vice Chair Palomero? Yes. Chair Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. My apologies. Nope. My um, apologies. Next item, please. Item number three is requesting commission approval of amendment number two to the Criminal Justice Center Development and Purchase and Sell Agreement between the Charter County of Wayne okay, and the Wayne. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, no, before we go forward with this. Um, 
Council, are we okay with this? Because there was some back and forth with the documents. Through the chair, so the commission just received this again. Um, I think I got it in my email at like 10.53 this morning um, during this call. Um, unfortunately, I can't speak to what the final version appears. There was one correction that was mentioned in some questions I asked that they did send and say they were going to make, but they actually don't appear in the revised document. And then I'm noticing now that there's a new section that I'm not aware of that's in this document. Um, and it appears this document is shorter than the original. Um, so I, I really can't speak to what changes were made or what this new document consists of. Um, I don't know if someone's on the line to try to assist, but staff just hasn't had an opportunity to review it and it looks different, different than I anticipated. Okay, I see Mr. Kaufman is on the line. Uh, Mr. Kaufman, if you could speak to this, please. Um, yes, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, as the commission may remember, this matter was before the commission, uh, before the pandemic hit. And when the pandemic hit, we withdrew it because we needed to see what the financial impact of the pandemic was going to be before we use this money for this purpose. We're now about <laughs> we're now about a year later. We can afford to do it. It has a it has numerous values to the county to pay rock the parking concession fee and the county getting complete control of our parking around the new criminal justice center. It allows us to decide uh, how much to charge for parking or if we can afford not to charge for parking. It removes all the complications of the accounting that could occur for 20 years between Rock and the county with obvious disagreements going to be along the way on a whole host of subjects. Uh, and I would go on, except I cannot be as articulate as Commissioner Anderson as he was at the committee meeting uh, and expressing his views of why this is such a value to the county. So I'll leave it there be available for questions as to the particular technical issues that uh, 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 Council Johnson raised. I guess I would ask uh, James uh, Heath, or I saw Matt McNaughton on earlier to speak to those. Yeah, so, Council, uh, would you like to speak to this, please? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll take a, a, a team approach to it. Uh, Commission Council is correct. Uh, she did point out several areas that. Uh, required some clarification. And when we initially uh, responded to her questions uh, yesterday, I believe earlier yesterday, we uh, had not had an opportunity to hear back from our counterparts at Rock regarding some of those issues, which uh, did deserve some clarification. Uh, we did, we were able to do so late last night. And so that accounts for some of the changes that uh, council is, is, is raising. Uh, Matthew, can you talk a little bit about your conversations with uh, council for the developer and, and the changes which uh, came uh, relatively late to, to the commission staff? Yes, this is Matt McNaughton. I'm outside council for the county. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say appreciate the, the comments and observations that uh, commission council made. Um, there were some minor changes to paragraph three, uh, just to confirm that, that both rock entities have the obligation to ensure that the parking parcels are transferred over to the county. And uh, we discussed those minor changes with, with council for, for rock yesterday, and it Unfortunately, it took most of the day to just get final confirmation with them that they were okay with, uh, again, these, these minor revisions. So my understanding is that the document that was submitted uh, this morning, apparently, should have only contained, uh, again, uh, some very minor revisions to paragraph three of the agreement to address the, the issues that Commission Council 
raised. And, Chairwoman, and, if I may. Yes. yes. So the agreement does not actually contain the revisions to paragraph three. Paragraph three is, three is the same, but then we have a new D1, which is not the revisions that were in the email we got last night. Um, so what is D1? And then we still don't have revisions in the document to three. I don't know if I can, maybe we can email you over what we received. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to uh, entertain questions from Commissioner Anderson and Commissioner Colleen. And then what I'd like to do is probably take a one hour recess so Commission Council can have an opportunity to review those documents and make sure that they all the questions were addressed and then we can reconvene at 1230. But before that, Commissioner Anderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, uh, I totally agree with uh, what you're proposing uh, to do a one hour uh, recess. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I support the proposal, certainly, uh, but uh, the minutia, I think, of uh, the, and the details, I think, are something that we should rely on. So I, th I think that's, uh, I, I agree with you. I just wanted to mention that I'm still in support in principle, but I wanted to see that our our attorney has an opportunity to review those, uh, what she has in hand. Thank you. Madam Chair, can I make a brief point? Sure. Um, I very much appreciate you taking the time to try to get this approved today because for every month we delay in approving this, it costs the county over $300,000. So I appreciate you trying to get these issues resolved today. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. Uh, Commissioner Colleen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the deputy county executive might have uh, answered this, but uh, if we've been holding off on this for a year, uh, what about 14 days and doing this at the next board meeting? Uh, you, you said there was some cost involved in that, Mr. Kaufman? Yeah, every day we delay is 3,100 uh, more dollars we got to pay rock. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I think it's unfortunate, you know, Madam Chair, uh, even with the one hour, um, there's a lot of issues here. And, uh, and of course, our uh, employees uh, that work in the courts and work for the sheriff, uh, this has been a concern of theirs right from day one, that they would be paying Rock Financial uh, for their parking. And uh, with all the compensation issues that we have uh, in the county for our employees, uh, there was great concern that, uh, you know, increase in parking costs for them uh, would be kind of piling on. Um, and uh, uh, I was delighted that we put in the uh, option to buy them directly. And I'm delighted uh, that we can uh, afford to do that. But of course, the devil is in the details. And it would be uh, irresponsible of me uh, to take votes uh when my attorney has outstanding questions. So I'm hopeful that an hour would do it, but it does make me nervous uh, in, in decision-making, uh, public decision-making uh, that we have this, this truncated time frame for such an important issue to so many people. So I would be willing to wait the hour, Madam Chair. Uh, and I hope my attorney has a, level of comfort in that hour that there's not more back and forth questioning uh because at that point uh i would think we would have to wait two weeks uh that the cost of not getting it right today uh might be a little bit more uh than losing some of the money uh for two weeks from now and of course we could always call uh, a special meeting of the commission uh in a relatively sh short time frame uh, just to deal with this one issue. So I don't want to rush it. I don't want to get into a mistake and get us uh, 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 into a deal that uh, maybe there's unforeseen consequences to. So I really want to take the time and make sure that the commission attorney is comfortable. Uh, if she's not comfortable in an hour from now when we reconvene, I think we should look at setting maybe Monday or something as a date to deal with this issue so we can get uh, uh, all of the information from our council and uh, a level of comfort that we absolutely know what we're doing here. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Varga, does it your hand? I put my hand down because I trust your judgment that an hour will be enough. And uh, I think we're close enough in the agreement to iron out the differences. And I trust in your uh, leadership to say if an hour is not enough, we'll come back in two. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Kinlock. You're muted. Yeah, yes, yes, I'm out. Thank you. Um, yes, I just want to note that this is an issue that we talked about at the um, Criminal um, Justice uh, Complex uh, uh, Special Committee. And um, so this is not something that's just uh, showing up at the, at the, um, at the table. Um, but I know that the conversations have been um, ongoing as far as trying to bring clarity uh, to, uh, to these questions. And um, I think that an hour should be uh, enough time uh, for the, our council to review um, and make sure that it is the exact uh, language uh, to spell out, that spells out the intent of what uh, our council has um, brought to light. And, um, you know, I, I think that it is very important for us to be able to uh, move this forward that, so that it does not cost any more money um, on the counties, on the counties, uh, on the county side, as it relates to this project. So um, I think in our, I'll make sure uh, that I uh, be available to um, dispose of this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so at this time, let's uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Heath, Mr. Kaufman. Um, we're going to check back at twelve thirty. Do, do I re do I resend my uh, uh, resend my motion? My motion. Sure. <laughs> okay. Because there was a motion on the floor. So we send it. Um, let's do this. We're going. We're going to dispose. Of, okay. So if you could resend your motion, please. I did. Whoever made the motion. John, I made the motion, so I resend supported, it. And whoever supported, Support. same. Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to dispose of the rest of the agenda. And then we will take a recess after that. So Madam Clerk, if you can go to the balance of the agenda, please. We're on page eight of the agenda, testimonial resolutions and certificates of appreciation. There are 13 items listed on pages eight through 10 of the agenda. There a motion? Approval. Thank you. Is there support? Move support. Moved and supported. All in favor of the testimony resolutions and certificates of appreciation, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Anyone wish to abstain? <clears throat> Motion carries. Thank you. Next item. We are on page 10 of the agenda, memoriams. There are six names listed. Move approval. Support. Support. Okay, thank you. Would anyone like to speak to any of the names listed? Okay, hearing none, if we can all take a moment of silence for those that we've lost. Thank you, and we'll keep the families in our prayers as well as please continue to keep in our prayers the family of those who we've lost to COVID as well. Next item, please. Reconsiderations. There are none. Next item. Remarks by members. Are there any remarks by members at this time? Any remarks by members? What? No remarks by members? <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Don't so poke much. the dog. Don't poke the sleeping dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, at this time, we will go on a one hour recess and we will reconvene at 12 30 to take on item uh, the item under new business. Thank you. We are in recess. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could uh, start us where we left off, please.
I'm sorry, you go right into the item? Yes, please. Item number three under business on the agenda is requesting commission approval of amendment number two to the Criminal Justice Center Development and Purchase and Sell Agreement between the Charter County of Wayne and the Wayne County Building Authority and Rock Development Company. Okay, thank you. So we had an hour recess just to make sure that all of our documents were um, in good order. And I will let everyone know that last week at Ways and Means, uh, Mr. Kaufman and Mr. Heath did present um, the idea to Ways and Means Committee um, as a <laughs> FYI. If you many of you recall, we had this last year before the pandemic. It came back to us. They gave an overview at last week's Ways and Means meeting. And it is here for us to um, discuss further and um, make a decision on. So with that being said, um, Commission Council, can you tell us what happened in the last hour? Um, yes, through the chair. So Commission staff had a discussion meeting with Corporation mm -hmm. Council and Outside Council um, to go over the changes, the revisions um, that they indicated yesterday that addressed the concerns I raised were included in the document. Um, there was some new language um, that we discussed this in there. Um, staff has reviewed it and uh, we don't have any further concerns regarding the revisions that were made. Okay, thank you. Uh, was anyone from the administration wish to add anything additional? Uh, Mr. Heath, Mr. Kaufman? Uh, I, don't, I don't know that we have anything additional to add. We do think uh, Commission Council um, and other Commission staff for uh, reviewing the submission with us over the last hour. And uh, if there are questions, we'll, we're able to take them, but uh, no other comments from us unless uh, Mr. Mr. Kaufman has something. Okay, Mr. Kaufman, you're okay. Mr. Kaufman, you are mute, Mr. Kaufman. Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, uh, any questions, we're happy to answer. Okay, thank you. Okay, at this time, I'll entertain a motion on item number three. So um, moved. Sure, move approval. Support. Been moved and supported. Discussion. Are there any questions to the administration or to Commission Council? Uh, Commissioner Colleen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a question for each. Uh, to Commission Council, um, in your original analysis, uh, Counselor, uh, you discussed a lot about uh, that we would have a party here that may not be bound by the agreement. Um, and you discussed a lot about uh, uh, your concerns and your questions. Uh, to uh, to the administration, uh, for instance, it's not clear how the terms of the definitive agreement are incorporated into the park agreement. So all of those uh, questions that you had, Commission Council, uh, in your committee analysis, are you satisfied now with the answers uh, to all those questions? Because I took it that you just reported back to us on the paperwork uh, that came uh, a little later on this morning. And I just wanted to go back to your original analysis to see if uh, the concerns you raised there have been alleviated as well. Through the chair, um, Commissioner, so we did briefly discuss that issue as well during our recess for the call. It's the same concern I raised with regards to Amendment 1. Um, I won't tell you that I fully understand it, but I am highly relying on our outside counsel who has assured me um, that that information, the way it's structured is sufficient. I believe the Corp Council has the same opinion that that information as presented is sufficient. That's what they told us for Amendment 1. We will rely on them with regards to that and I'm comfortable relying on both outside council and corporation council for that particular issue. Thank you, Councillor. And then my question to the administration or uh, what now is the plan for parking over there uh, before we recess? You know, I, I raised the issue of uh, staff parking over there and the concerns that staff have and how much it's going to cost them. Uh, and, and I think looking at this, who, first of all, who will we approve this? Who's going to manage the parking lots? And 
do we have uh, a plan for uh, what this may or may not cost uh, uh, Wayne County staff in terms of parking? Um, are we going to still be charging staff for that? It's going to be free. What's going to be, what, what is it going to be with these parking lots now relative to our staff? Well, with the issue of what we're going to charge, uh, we are going to wait uh, to see what our financial situation is closer to the time we're going to open up and then make a decision. Uh, I will state personally, my opinion is the, if we are financially able to do it, one of the highest priority things to me to provide staff is free parking because it's tax-free money in their pocket really because they don't yeah. have to pay somewhere else and it's just another issue when it comes to retaining and attracting staff to have a uh, free parking so i can tell you that's the administration's goal and we're hopeful we can do it here, but everything got shaken up with the pandemic. We are much better off now than we were when it hit, but just to be prudent, we want to wait till a couple months before we're going to actually start operating to make a decision on what makes sense. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kaufman, and I wholeheartedly support that approach, and I'm hoping right on the numbers. Uh, because I think it would help with staff. Um, and then Mr. Kaufman, who's gonna manage these parking lots? Uh, we, now that we know we're gonna, that we are going to own them, we are gonna send out an RFP for the services we need to manage and okay. landscape and security and all those things that go into managing parking lots. Okay. so. We own them free and clear. We're going to send out our own RFP for managing these. Uh, the ownership of the land and the parking lots will be Wayne County. And uh, there will be no involvement in the parking lots from any of the rock companies. Exactly right. And it's music to my ears. Beautiful. Mine too. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Anderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, if I could to uh, someone, Mr. Kaufman, Judge Kaufman, or uh, anyone else, uh, we've covered, a, I think you uh, you're right on track with uh, what you're saying about the charges. We have to see where we're at. But where will that revenue go? Will it go into general fund? Will it go into, uh, I know the current structure right now with some of our parking uh, is it goes to EDC, I believe. Uh, it, it'll go to general fund. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Any additional questions from commissioners? Any additional questions, concerns, comments? Okay. Hearing none, we have a motion in support. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman. Commissioner Clark Coleman. I think yes. she's muted. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Commissioner yes. Dobb. Yes. Commissioner Haddis. Yes. Commissioner Colleen. Aye. Commissioner Kenlap. Yes. Commissioner Knizic. Yes. Commissioner Marecki. Yes. Commissioner Scott. Yes. Commissioner Varga. <clears throat> yes. Vice Chair Pro Tem Baydoun? Yes. Vice Chair Palomero? Yes. Chair Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Uh, we disposed of all of the other items on the agenda. So at this time, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Support. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.